Hi, everybody! I said we'd hear something about a new Spyro game during this Year of the Dragon. I was called a delusional liar by the Spyro fandom. Tell me when I'm telling lies! Next time I say something, listen to me. I'm usually right. Tell me when I'm telling lies! Until you're wrong, that is, and then when you are wrong, you are so catastrophically wrong that you make the Chicago Bears front office from the last 20 or so years look like absolute gods when it comes to decision making. It just made too much logical sense for there not to be something Spyro related. I came to my conclusion from things I'd heard, plus using something people call logic. Something a lot of people lack in this day and age. But here's the great thing, Canadian Guy A has been able to confirm a Spyro game is in development. When it comes to Crash and Spyro content, he is one of the most reliable guys out there. His sources indicate it's in very early development, but we'll have to wait and see. So if the game is in such early stages of development, why am I all gung-ho about this? Again, it comes down to a little thing called logic. Look at how Toys for Bob have been giving us little Spyro easter eggs since 2020. Those types of things typically would be started in very early stages of development. Also, yes, Toys for Bob before going independent were hit with a round of layoffs. But here's the thing. Usually when a project wraps up, staff members who were either at the end of their contracts or were hired as temporary workers are let go. At the time, Toys for Bob had recently concluded development on Crash Team Rumble, which had a lot of teething trouble. So maybe the layoffs were related to that game being completed, or they could have been regarding the Activision Blizzard buyout, which, for those of you who forgot, Toys for Bob was a subsidiary of Activision until earlier this year. They asked for independence, as they didn't like the structure of how things were under Activision. They also clearly still had an interest in working with Microsoft IPs, thus they established a different kind of partnership. I think we'll see Toys for Bob working with whoever they want to going forward. But, you know, if I use my brain, it's easy to see development is probably much further along than people think. Like I said earlier, some of the easter eggs in Crash Bandicoot 4, both in-game and the art book, would indicate Spyro 4 has been in development since at minimum early 2020. There's also the fact game developers don't just work on one project at a time anymore. They work on multiple, so it's conceivable that Spyro 4 has been in development for at least four years at this point in time. What's the typical development cycle for a game in the modern age? Roughly three to five years for a triple A level game. Tell me when I'm telling lies! Now in all likelihood, Spyro won't have a budget pushing into the triple A territory. It's likely that of a double A experience. Taking that into consideration, Crash Team Rumble's troubled development probably meant Spyro got put on the back burner. So using that viewpoint, it's likely that the game is in the latter stages of mid-cycle development. If times had been more normal, I imagine we'd have heard something about Spyro 4 at the Game Awards last year, and we'd probably have gotten a release date of June this year. I still think we're going to see it this year. Because marketing it in the Year of the Dragon is just too juicy an opportunity to miss. I imagine it'll see release for a holiday season of this year, since that would mean it'd be a huge seller, especially if it's a multi-platform project, which I think it will be. So why do I think it'll be a multi-platform game? Simply put, money. Microsoft can make far more cash off of Spyro 4 if it's multi-platform from day one. There's also the fact Spyro doesn't exactly fit the Xbox identity either, since that system is primarily known as the shooter machine. There's also the fact the majority of the Spyro fanbase are still PlayStation fans, which is impressive when you consider Spyro has been multi-platform since the PlayStation 2 days. Plus, it's not like Microsoft is against releasing its exclusives on other platforms. Just look at the games they've released on other systems lately. Admittedly, those games are primarily older exclusives that had roughly reached their peak sales figures on the Xbox. It's a similar business model to what Sony is doing with the PlayStation exclusives on PC. There's also the fact Spyro and Crash are still heavily associated with the PlayStation brand. So ultimately, it makes zero sense for them to release it as an Xbox exclusive, since it just wouldn't sell as much. So I think I should discuss this next. If it doesn't come out this year, when is it going to come out? If I was to hazard a guess, I would say sometime next year, even if it's still in fairly early development. A 2025 release date isn't out of the question. Why do I say that? 
because Toys for Bob already have the framework from which to build a brand new Spyro game. You have to remember, they, with support from Vicarious Visions and Sanzaru Games, pumped out the Reignited trilogy, which they had to build from the ground up because Insomniac Games had lost the source codes for the original three. As great as the Spyro games are, you have to admit they are formulaic. If it strays too far from the formula, you get crap like the Legends series. Eh, that's your opinion. I like the Legend of Spyro games. I mean, shit, they ain't nothing like the fucking stupid Skylanders games. Oh, wait a minute. I'm looking at the script and you actually address that, so, uh, never mind. Oh well, at least those games weren't as bad as the Skylander ones. I mean, Jesus Christ, Spyro looked like a scaly pug in those games. Tell me when I'm telling lies! But considering Spyro is formulaic means they just have to carry over the physics engine from the last game, make some tweaks to it, add in a new gameplay element or two, and maybe update the art style to be more in line with Crash Bandicoot's. And you've got the game's framework built. At that point, it'd just be ironing out any bugs and a few basic things like that. So since I brought it up, I do feel that Spyro has to stick to the formula of the original trilogy. That's what people enjoy. Also, there's the fact there are very few 3D platformers in this day and age. You basically have Crash, Spyro, A Hat in Time, and a few random indies. The number of 3D collectathons are so few that even the mediocre ones stand out. That's generally speaking not a good sign. Then again, before the recent Metroidvania craze, that genre wasn't in a good state either. Yep, as a Metroidvania fan, I can confirm this. When Castlevania was done being that style of game, and when Nintendo was pretty much done with Metroid as that style of game, yeah, th those were some dark, dark times, because we were not getting a whole lot, and the ones that we did were either absolutely brilliant, or piles of crap. It, there was no in-between. So, yeah, that I can definitely relate. And I'm also a fan of 3D platformers, 3D collectathons, so, yeah, I, I definitely feel the pain all over again. Speaking of other 3D platformers, I am presently working on a review for Clive and Wrench, so if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. Either way, Spyro 4 will need to stick to the formula, since that's what people like, and every time the franchise has deviated from said formula, the success has been varied, even if one of Spyro's worst outings, Enter the Dragonfly, stuck to that formula. Oh, don't worry, I'll review that game eventually. Hit the like button if you'd like to see me suffer through that piece of shit. Before we wrap up, I want to say the absolute latest I think we'll see this game is in 2026, because it's better for Toys for Bob to get out a new game as soon as they can since they are going to need all of the money they can get. Thanks go out to my current channel members, R. Campbell and Danny Boy. If you'd like to help the channel out further, you can do so by hitting the join button or the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out my previous videos discussing Spyro 4. Until next time, keep blazing that trail.